be sure to go to flipsidegaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. It's a good deal and helps support the show. What is up, Planeswalkers? Theric 6 back with the final Theros set review, preview, spoiler list, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, we are going to start off with all of the cards that have been revealed since the last time, and then I'm going to go over essentially all of the cards that have been shown um, uh, in that final dump, which is mostly comes and uncommons. So I just wanted to scroll through those and maybe give my thoughts on um, some things overall. So first, we'll start off here with Altar of the Pantheon. Three mana, your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. I think that's really awesome. One, it's a common, which means that technically this could help popper devotion. <laughs> no, it, it's nice because this essentially is going to be... Um, just a nice additional card for Brawl, uh, honestly. And the fact that you gain a little bit of life if you control a god, demigod, or legendary enchantment is nice. Now, notably, the sagas, at least some of the sagas, now that I'm thinking about it, are legendary. Um, so that's cool. Otherwise, the legendary enchantment stuff is kind of whatever. Um, but, you know, it's another way to add a little bit of mana, um, and it does increase your devotion, which is very helpful. Then we have Taranika, a crone veteran, is a one dub white for a 3-3 vigilance creature whenever she attacks untap another target creature you control until end of turn that creature has base power times four and has indestructible so i will say that i think she is pretty decent the fact that she's legendary is a little bit annoying um but otherwise you know white's not allowed to have good things so uh that said you know curving this is pretty decent go um i don't know some sort of turn to play in white Turn two, play in white. Um, yeah, I don't know. You play something on turn two, and then <laughs> you get to attack with her. She's vigilant, which is nice. Uh, which is nice. Unfortunately, you know, since she's legendary, you can't double up and have two Terranikas that are attacking and um, giving themselves indestructible together. That would probably be a little too good, uh, at least for white. And you know, in general, I think this card's okay. Whether or not we'll see it in White Devotion remains to be seen, because one, she's legendary. Two, there's other things that you might want to put in the 3-drop slot. And three, she is, at the end of the day, a 3-3 three, three creature with Vigilance who has to attack uh, in order to really get that value. Calyx Destiny's Hand. Um, this card is... Well, let's. I guess we'll talk about the card first before we talk about the character. Two, green-white for a four loyalty Planeswalker. Already right there. Way more balanced than all the shit wizards have been doing. <laughs> plus one. Oh, wow. It's a plus one, so it goes from four to five instead of from, like, five to six. Or from four to six. I'm a four, four mana planeswalker. Wow. Wow, so nice. Look at the top four cards for your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Now, obviously, th that is a relatively restrictive first ability. So let's continue. Minus three, exile target creature or enchantment you don't control. Until target enchantment you do control leaves the battlefield. Essentially, it turns all of your enchantments into Oblivion Rings. Um, it's not true Oblivion Rings because it only hits creatures and enchantments. I just can't think of any card that only hits creatures and enchantments that does the Oblivion Ring effect. Um, technically, it's not even Oblivion Ring. Te technically, it's more like Banishing Light. But whatever, we're splitting hairs. Once again, this requires a certain type of deck to be built in. To actually be powerful in. Right? You need... Already, you need some number of enchantments. Okay. Minus seven, return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's not, you know, gangbusters. It's not the most overpowered um, uh, planeswalker we've ever seen. And honestly, I like that. I do think this card is probably a little weaker than it could be um, just in general. I, I will say that I really appreciate the, the narrowness of this card. I prefer planeswalkers who are really good at what, they're, what they do but are generally more narrow. Now, obviously, there are, you know, different things that, um, you know, different Planeswalkers who aren't as fleshed out, per se, um, that we don't have enough on for them to be um, super narrow yet. We haven't really defined what they can do as a character. Um, but even someone like Angrath, um, I feel like Angrath was a fine power level. Uh, he was relatively generic, but I still thought that he was um, uh, fine overall. Whereas we have shit like Hoko into three fairy that is awful now as for the the character um this is an entirely created being um calyx was created by uh Clo clothis Clothis, whatever her name is um and then he 
got the ability to planeswalk whether or not he he actually had a spark or anything like that who knows um but this does set a precedent that well it continues a precedent that planeswalkers don't technically all adhere to the same rules you know we already know that we have will and rowan who can only planeswalker to planeswalk together i believe um we have um Zhang yang yu and his dog um he he can take his dog around and that's something that other planeswalkers can't really do they can't take other beings with them kaya i think can technically go into someone's body and, and bring them along for the ride um, i think that's what she did with rat um and now this is instead of him planeswalking weirdly um he is the first he's the first created being who innately has the ability to planeswalk if that makes sense um so you know karn technically can planeswalk but he has sparks from other people um, he's had many sparks from other people um but this one is the first one's like I am fully made of not like not being born essentially and he can play as well. I think I think that's possibly fine if only for the fact that I might be able to finally get a planeswalking angel and a planeswalking demon. I want both of them. You might say, but Ferix, what about Abnixilus? Fuck Abnixilus, he's boring and lame. <laughs> oh, a cool demon. Cool demon. Uh, but yeah, Calyx, Calyx is fine. Skophos, Maze Warden, uh, four mana, three, four. This goes along with another card we'll see in a second. Um, it gets it can get flow stone the flow stone effect essentially um plus one minus one dangerous but you know if your opponent has fuck all on board you can hit your opponent for six it's not awful when another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named the labyrinth you may have it deal it you may have this fight that creature it's the miniature of the labyrinth cool that that's about it uh, eidolon of obstruction is a two minute two one rare creature that is first strike loyalty abilities of planeswalkers your opponent's control cost one more to activate now you might be saying well Therix, this is very similar to thalia and, and thalia is a rare yes i understand thalia is a rare but thalia wasn't printed in an environment where green gets a two mana two three that makes it so creatures and enchantments can't be countered and has more abilities beyond that i'll, I'll get to it soonish but why wizards why this is this is this is a narrow narrow ability that loyalty abilities of planeswalkers cost one more and it's not even a great body it's a fine body when you're thinking of like the the big scheme of well this is obviously a card for death and taxes even though this card will not see playing death and taxes because the ability is way too narrow it's you know it's, it's a card for death and taxes so you know it's body makes sense but in the context of standard in the context of right now this card gets beat by like one mana creatures in every color i should say probably every other color but still like this it, it's annoying it ju it's just annoying fast oracle speaking of well it's a two mana creature but whatever this this card is fucking awesome <laughs> it's stupid but it's awesome two mana for one three merfolk with fantastic art by jesper um when the reason i didn't say his last name is because i don't know how to pronounce it so shut up when it enters the battlefield look at the top x cards of your library where x is your devotion to blue at minimum because of because she's a, a, a double blue creature you're going to look at the top two at minimum put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order and since it's up to you can decide to just bottom both of those it's kind of like a scry the reason i say it's kind of it's because you can only have max uh keep one on top if x is greater than or equal to the number of cards left in your library you win the game this works really nicely uh with a card called uh jace fuck <laughs> not jace fuck i forgot his name oh, i forgot his name i'm sorry so, i'm so sorry jace which what fucking what is your name what is your stupid ass name jace wielder of mysteries works really well with this guy because um notice he has three blue, blue pips and has other ways of winning the game if you have a really low man uh, library count this is going to be a, a type of blue devotion i assume and it's going to be fun and i'm going to play it once again um if i'm repeating myself it's because my memory is trash um so yeah an enigmatic incarnation is a two blue green enchantment at the beginning of your end step if you you may sacrifice another enchantment if you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrifice enchantment's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. This is similar to Birthing Pod and Vanifar. The issue is, one, this happens at end step. You don't control when it happens. 
two, you only sacrifice enchantments. Um, it's a lot easier to get creatures than it is to get enchantments. And um, three, it's an enchantment. Now, I'm not saying enchantments are any worse to play than creatures or um, artifacts, but more things care about creatures and artifacts, so you can do more things with it. Uh, this card makes me sad, and I don't think it'll see play anywhere except for, like, Chaos EDH. Dream Sipper Shaman is a 6 mana 5-4. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay 3 and sacrifice a non-land permanent. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. Put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, in a random order. Excuse me. This is a damn what is that a polymorph effect right so the beginning of your end step you sack a thing you get a thing the main issue with this card besides the fact that it costs six mana is that it happens on your end step <laughs> you you don't get to control when it happens i understand that would make it a little bit too strong that's why you change some of the other knobs maybe make it cost more make it tap instead um make the card like make the creature body weaker um, make it cost more, give it more red devotion even. Um, but as of right now, it is not good. It's, it's interesting for an uncommon, which I appreciate, but it's not good. Sea God Scorn, four blue blue, return up to three target creatures and or enchantments to their owner's hands. Um, this card is fine and will be decent and limited and specifically sealed, I assume. Lagana Band Storyteller, four mana for a three, four, Passes the Pillar Field Ox test. When it enters the battlefield, you may put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. If you do, you gain life equal to the card's mana cost. So, in Limited, where there are going to be a lot of playable enchantments, this is going to be good. Everywhere else, there's MasterCard, and not this. <laughs> Destiny Spinner. Wow, I want wow, that, that crazy card that I was talking about earlier. Two mana for 2-3. Right there, better than a bear. We've seen things like this before. Um, Thornwood, whatever his name is. Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Already, that would be a, a powerful enough card. But no. Four mana, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. I understand that that last ability is not necessarily the best, but the fact of the matter remains. White got a rare... That has a niche ability, weak stats for its cost, and a small body. I guess the, the weak stats for its cost. Sure, whatever, shut up. Green, which is already the most powerful co color in standard right now, gets a strong body for the cost. No, it's not a 3-3, but fuck off. 2-3 two, two, is better than, you know, a bear. Has an incredibly relevant ability for the color. And has an extra bit tacked on. First Strike is not an extra bit tacked on. First Strike is the minimum requirement to make a 2 mana 2 1 like playable. Wizards, why? <laughs> they have such a they have such a hard on for green right now. It's crazy. Green's giving them all this wood. I'm I'm terrible. Furious Rise is a 3 mana enchantment at the beginning of your end step. I, so many beginning of your end step things, I don't know why. Whatever. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. That's it. I like this card. It It's a it's a red card that gives you that exile card draw. Is there a name for that? Is there a name for that exile card draw? Who knows? But it gives you that exile card draw, but it requires you to be playing something that isn't a super aggressive deck, right? You're going to need some some power, some big Chungai creatures, right? So I do appreciate that. Um... And I like that that card just remains in exile, playable, until you exile a new card. Now, obviously, this happens at the beginning of each of your things. But, if you don't control a creature power 4 greater, you don't exile a top card. Okay? Um, if you, for some reason, stop this ability using a card like Trickbind or something, which I don't know why you would do that. You still get to, you still get to play that other card. So, I very much appreciate the way that this is templated. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Here of the prize, uh, two mana two two. That has heroic essentially. Your creatures get plus one. I maybe this will be good in limited. I don't know. I don't really care. I just know that it's a white card that's bad. 
Uh, Elspeth's de Devotee. This is not a card in the set, as you can see down here. This is uh, one of the cards from the Planeswalker decks. Four mana for 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for the Elspeth, the Planeswalker deck Elspeth. Put it in your hand. It's whatevs. Sunlight Hoplite, also in there. I think this is the card that Elspeth grabs with her minus ability. As long as you turn, it has first strike, two mana, two one, first strike. Uh, gets plus one, plus oh, as long as it becomes a three mana one. This is a, this is a common. The only difference is it has this instead of the tacked on Planeswalker ability. And it doesn't have first strike defending. It's, uh, whatever. Uh, another card in the, the Planeswalker deck. Three mana for a two, two. Behavior combat in your turn. Dark creature control gets plus two, plus oh. This essentially is a three mana four, two on your turn. That's not awful. It's a Planeswalker deck card, but it's not awful. Also a Planeswalker deck card, and also not awful. Three mana for a 1-4. As long as there are 10, uh, 10 or more cards in a single graveyard, so 10 in yours or 10 in one of your opponents, it's a 4-4, four, four, which is not bad. Three mana, 4-4. Four, four. Um, and it can be blocked as long as you control an Ashiok. This card's not awful. It's, n it's, it's not a good card, but it ain't bad. Like, this this is one of those cards where, like, if you're playing an Ashiok Mill Brawl deck, you would consider this card. And you might even play it. <laughs> That's such a sad... And you might even play it. Um, Mind Rack Harpy. Also from Planeswalker deck. Also not awful. This this card's, like, one CMC away from being a good card. Um, four mana, three, two, Flyer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each player puts the top three cards of the library into the graveyard. That's, that's a nice ability to have. Um... If this creature was, um, obviously it fucks up devotion and stuff. Uh, typically adding more pips of the same color makes the card a little bit worse, but in specifically devotion sets, it makes it a little bit better. Um, but if this card instead was one double black for a 2-2 two -two flyer, or honestly even like a 2-1 flyer, um, and had the same ability, it would be, I think, standard playable as hell. Um, as it is right now, it's just it's just that one mana cost away. It... it I really do think that at three mana, um, I mean, absolutely at three mana at these exact stats, I think it'd be too good. Um, but at three mana with adjusted stats, I think this card would be playable. Ashok's Forerunner, she grabs Ashok and she has Flash. That's that's it. <laughs> Nightmare Shepherd. Mono Black Devotion is getting some shit. Four mana for a four four flying demon. Already good enough. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1 a one -one and is a nightmare in addition to its other types. Its other types. So first things first, I'm going to talk about Brawl slash Commander. In those formats, you get to choose where your um, where your thing goes as a, as a replacement effect, right? So let's say I'm playing Muldrotha. I have Nightmare Shepherd out. My Muldrotha would die, right? I can choose to put it in the graveyard or instead put it back to the command zone. However, with Nightmare Shepherd, it gives me an additional replacement effect. And that replacement effect is to exile it. Now I have three options when my Muldrotha dies. Exile it to Nightmare Shepherd, put it in the command zone, or let it go to the graveyard. I'm going to choose to exile it. Now, when it would go to exile, I have another check. And that is to keep it in exile, or like put it to exile, or put it in the command zone. If I choose to exile it first, then put it in the command zone, I'm still going to get the copy, and here's why. Nightmare Shepherd doesn't care if the card actually goes to exile. It cares that you choose to exile it. Now, obviously, this may change, but based on my understanding of the rules as is, you can do some cool stuff with that in Brawl and or Commander. Now, in the um, standard decks, for the most part, if it's a creature that you're choosing to sacrifice that's not a cat, you literally might as well exile it. Because unless you're a sacrifice deck that also cares about the graveyard, you don't care about the graveyard. So if you have Nightmare Shepherd out, and your, um, your, what, uh, fucking, what is that goddamn card called? Oh my god. <laughs> If your Nightmare Shepherd's out and your Grey Merchant of Asphodel dies, fucking exile that shit and get another copy of Grey Merchant from As of Asphodel. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I can't I can't wait to mono black all over the place. Gonna move on. Omen of the Dead. One mana flash enchantment. 
Return time creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is not a great one of the omen. Slowsome Chimera. It's a 3 mana 4 one that that becomes a, a 5 2 when you uh, escape it. It's fucking horrifying. <laughs> Hammer by Rose. Uh, 3 mana for a 2 2 constellation. Once again, not enchantment. None of the constellation cards are enchantments in the set. It makes me very, very sad. <sighs> when enchantment enters the battlefield under control, it gets double strike. Whatever. Here's of the Rebel. Enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 stater. Who cares? When you cast the Red Spell, it targets this. Could you control get this? It's a five minute card. It's not good. Thassa's Intervention is real fucking good. X blue blue. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a, in a random order. If X is one, you can just look at the, the top one and you can put that one into your hand or you can just choose not to. It's up to. You can be like, nah, fuck this. I don't want this card. Other option. Counter target spell unless controller pays X. Twice X, excuse me. So, let's think about Syncopate, right? The only... Syncopate can do for two total mana, right? Blue and, and one for X. This can only do minimum three CMC. So, let's do that for Syncopate. So, Syncopate, when you pay three, right, they have to pay two. For this, when you pay three, they have to pay two. Because X is one, twice X is two. When you pay this for four... It becomes four. When you play this for five, it becomes six. And then eight. And then ten. This scales amazingly. And the fact of the matter is, it is an option counterspell. Very similar to Supreme Will. And because of that, I assume that this card is going to see some fucking play. In some control deck somewhere, um, I'm going to try to make a, a non-fires bolus deck whether or not it's going to be good remains to be seen. Shadow Spear. Oh, I love it. What? <laughs> One mana for a legendary artifact. Equipped creature gets... Uh, equipped two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. It has trample and lifelink. Pay one, permanent your opponent's control. Lose hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Why didn't they just let this card be white? Not only would it help the potion decks, it would give a card that's good and frankly... The trample's a little iffy, but frankly, in color pie. Um, it would give it would give a good card to white. But instead, it's colorless. And I understand why they should make it colorless, because one, just because it's being wielded by Elspeth doesn't mean it's a it doesn't mean it's a white card. I mean that thing is literally pulled from a nightmare. It, it literally says a weapon of darkness for a warrior of light. But still. But still. Or fu fuck it! Make the equip cost two or a single white. Bada bing, bada boom. Or even just make the, the fucking pay one white. I like the card. It's like the first good equipment that's been printed in forever. Whatever. Bronze Hide Lion. A different version of the Nemetan Lion. Nim whatever. Um, first one we got was... Uh, silk? No. Fleece Mane Lion. There we go. Um, that was, you know, showing the, like, ooh, you can't touch this, blah, blah, blah. This one is showing a version where, um, you turn it into a coat. <laughs> so, two mana, three, three. First of all, fantastic stats. Definitely going to try in a, uh, an Abzan deck, Abzan mid. Um, pay additional two, gains indestructible until end of turn. Not bad. I like it. When it, it dies, returns to the battlefield, it's an aura enchantment. With enchant creature you control gets the ability to get indestructible. Um... Aura and loses all other abilities. It's an aura with that and loses all other abilities. Okay, so it loses it loses the ability to protect itself. So it can still be destroyed, but the creature gets the ability to not be destroyed. That's what that means. I like it. Heliod's Pilgrim. It's a reprint moving on. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Is a seven mana five five elemental that happens to also have trample. That happens to also have an ability where if you tap a permanent, not just a land, not just a fucking land. Even though green doesn't like artifice, whatever, not just a fucking land. Um, any permanent for mana, it produces triple, three times as much of that mana instead. 
Soul Ring produces six mana with this out. A basic, uh, basic um, lands produces three mana when this is out. Mono green Nissa decks have already been too damn good. I feel like this card is stupid. It does cost seven, but hear me out. You can go turn one, Burb. Turn two, Ramp Creature. Turn three, and it's a turn four this. With mana to spare. All I'm saying. Mystic Repeal. It is a weird one. You, <laughs> instant speed, put an enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. <laughs> it's, it's it's fun. It's cool. Like, <laughs> I, li I love the simplicity of this card. Um, you, you legit just like, hey, God. Bye-bye. <laughs> put it on the bottom. It's fun. Agonizing Remorse. I have no idea if I talked about this card already. But whatever, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, two mana. Sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it and... Uh, or a card from the graveyard. Sorry, it's not and. Exile that card. You lose one life. So this is very similar, but different from Thought Erasure. One, more splashable. Makes sense. Two, you get to pick from the graveyard. Fantastic. Three, the card gets exiled. Also fantastic. You lose a life. Not the best. I think that... Th a lot of people, I, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say a lot. Some people are saying this is better than um, uh, Thought Erasure. Some people are saying it's just worse. I think this is a side grade. I think you play these cards in conjunction with each other, depending on how the metagame settles. Um, I could definitely see you playing uh, a handful of both in the, in the main deck, and then maybe one or the other, or maybe a handful of both on the side. Uh, and it all really just depends on, on what you need, on, on what the metagame requires you to have. I really, I really like this card. Also, the art is fantastic. Elspeth's Nightmare. Um, got some Phyrexians. We got Elspeth here with, who got fucking stabbed. And then we got some Underworld shit. Three mana for an Enchantment Saga. Okay, not all the Sagas are legendary. Are any of the Sagas legendary? <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm not sure. I guess they're not. Fuck. <laughs> I played this game. Not for a living, but you know. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less. That's fine. For, for a three mana card, that's totally fine. Three mana, remove a small creature, reasonable. With upside, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land from it. That player discards that card. You get a duress, right? Um, so turn one, you're getting a slightly over uh, over-costed... Um, I don't know any specific removal card that does that, but whatever. You get slightly over-costed general removal. Then you add on to that duress. Cool. And then my... The third one, Exile Target Opponent's Graveyard. If if there's going to be a decent amount of graveyard shenanigans um, and aggro decks, I think that Mono Black um, Devotion might run one or two of these in the sideboard. Um, there's also the fact that they are trying to have some sort of like Mono Black or Black White enchantment, enchantment deck where you like sacrifice the champions and shit. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this card in it. Who knows this is going to be good. Elspeth Conquers Death. Three double white. The first amazing white card I saw out of this fucking set. First off, Exile Target Permanent and, a, uh, and Opponent Controls with Converted Mana Cost 3 or Greater. Now, this essentially just means that 2s, 1s, and zeros can't target. That's fine. Um, obviously, this can't hit your crises. Um, I mean, honestly, that's that's like the most the most important thing. Um, but, it, you know, it can't hit your crises. I guess it can't hit lands either. But still, you know, it, it it's a good removal spell. It exiles the shit. It's fine. Second one is, in my opinion, a little bit less impactful. Non-creature spells your opponent's uh, cast cost two more to cast until your next turn. Um, this makes it so that, you know, they're, they're going to be playing off curve, and that's fine. Um, but by the time this comes out, it might not be enough because it is, you know, you're, you're playing this hopefully on turn five um, or later even. And at that point, you know, they can play a four drop um, if they went first, yeah, um, or a three drop anyway. I don't know. It's not that I say it like that, but they 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 can still just play any creature. Um, would it be too good if it said non enchantment spell? Yeah, it'd probably be too good if it said non enchantment spell. 
The middle one is the one I'm least enthused about, obviously. And of course, the third one, return target uh, creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter or a loyalty counter on it. Hell yeah, bud. I do love me some mono-white reanimation, because white, fun fact, gets reanimation. Does it get it often? No. Does it get it well? No. Could get it. Dream Trawler is an awesome sphinx. I, I just love this damn card. The art's fantastic. Jasper, again, damn. Um, and I, I, I like the abilities. Two, dub white, dub blue. Fantastic for your devotion to white or blue decks. Maybe. Because you have to be playing the other color. Three mana, or three five, flying lifelink. Already fine. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one until end of turn. Plus one, plus out. When it attacks, draw a card. It's always attacking as a four power creature that has lifelink. And you get to draw. And you can discard a single card to give it hexproof and protect it. It taps it, but if you're already attacking, who cares? So you attack, you draw a card, it becomes bigger, and your opponent's like, I'm gonna kill it. And you're like, no. Obviously, they can try and kill the card first, but the fact that it draws a card means that you get to protect it and potentially draw more cards with it later. Whatever, it's fine. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Here of the games, three mana, three two. We, this this spell is this card has heroic. They have so many of these. They have so many of these. Whenever you cast a spell that targets this, they should have just brought heroic back. I don't understand why they didn't do that. It do, it does not make sense to me. But, like they had so many of these damn things. Whatever, it's not great. Acolyte of Affliction is a four mana two three, human I guess. When it ends the battlefield, put the top two cards of the library into your graveyard, then you may return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. This is easier to cast, but slightly weaker than Golgari Findbroker. However, this also puts cards into your library, or into your graveyard. So, if you didn't have a permanent in your graveyard with Golgari Findbroker, you always felt kind of bad about playing it. But sometimes you needed to play it. This... We'll let you have your cake and eat it too, most likely. Um, I will say, technically, Fine Broker is better in the um, Devotion decks because it have d does have the double pips, but eh, I, I like Acolyte of Affliction. Now, I'm relatively certain I, I talked about this one already, but if I didn't, two mana for 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, it gets a little bit bigger. Pay two to sacrifice another creature or enchantment, it gains first strike. This card does not go in the sacrifice deck because it, there are way too many better options at two. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. La it's the Labyrinth of Skafos. For centuries, the Minotaur, the Minotaur Polis of Skafos was unknown to humans. It remains unexplored. <laughs> so they know about it now. There's like, fuck that. <laughs> um, Labyrinth, it is essentially, um, Maze of Ith, except it taps for mana. And it costs more to use. But it costs about them the same amount as Mystifying Maze, I think, except it doesn't blink the thing. And this works for blocking creatures, so I really appreciate this card. Can add a colorless or pay for, remove something from uh, combat. If you're playing a two, a, a one or two color control deck, I think this card is decent to look at because it means that even even though it's a, a hefty cost, it is something that you can um, rely on to give you a, maybe a turn, and sometimes a turn is all you need. Protean Thaumaturge is a Two mana, one, one. <laughs> Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Protean Thaumaturs become a copy of another target creature, except it has this ability. You have to be playing enchantments in order to trigger this. It's nice that you get to target any other creature, but this card is bad because it you have to be playing other creatures, like, or you have to be playing enchantments. Like, the constellation cards in this format suck. Mischievous Chimera is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two, flying whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn. Deal 1 damage to each opponent. Scry 1. Um, is it Flash as a deck? This is going to go into Is it Flash. We'll follow Haven. 2-mana Enchant Land. and Whenever an Enchanted Land is tapped for a mana, it's controlled as an additional green. And you can sacrifice it to, to make a wolf. Wizards, why? Nesting Wanderer. It's a 2 mana 1 3. Whenever an enchantment has a battlefield control, look at the top three cards of the library. You may reveal a land card and put it in, into your hand. Sure, it's fine. Shadow the Sky. Ooh, baby. This is what I'm talking about. 4 mana. For a 
board wipe. Each player who controls a creature with power four greater draws a card, but uh, you also get to blow up everything, so I think that's worth it. Um, this card is good. Is this card going to see play? Possibly. Because... It is just a four mana board wipe. Even if your your green opponent or whatever has a creature with power four greater and draws a card, you're not playing this as a one for one. Now, obviously, if they have a, a four power creature and then another bull like whatever creature, um, it does make this so it's not a two for one. It's just a one for one because they do get to draw a card. As soon as you hit that third one, it's a two for one. You hit that fourth one, it's a three for one. Um, and if they don't have a creature with power 4 or greater, they don't get to draw. Notably, if you have a creature with power 4 or greater, you get to replace that creature. Right? So, I mean, let's say, for some reason, you're playing Cavalier of Dawn, which I'm pretty sure is a 4 or 5? Pretty sure it's a 4 or 5. You destroy Cavalier of Dawn, you get an enchantment back, which you're maybe playing, you get to draw a card, you get to blow up the world. So, I think this card is fantastic, I'm really looking forward to playing with it, blah 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 blah. Entrancing Liar is a <laughs> you liar uh, is a liar that plays itself because it has fucking hands and it creeps me out. Uh, three minutes you may choose not to untap Enchanting Liar during your untap step. Pay X and tap target creature with power X or less. It doesn't untap as long as it, uh, this remains tapped. You essentially just like, hey, I'm going to pay one down payment for this now. Stay tapped. Go away. Uh, this card is not off. It's probably not going to say any standard play, but it's cool. Relentless Pursuit. Three mana reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature and or land into your hand. Put the rest in your graveyard. The card's good. Is it going to see plain standard? I don't know, because so many other cards are just great. Like, there's there are a lot of good cards here. That's not true. There are some good cards here um, in Theros Beyond Death, but too many cards in standard right now are stupid. Um, I just... I feel like the, the power gaps are too high. Right? I want... I don't want all of the cards to be up here. I don't want all of the cards to be here. I just want this to go down a little and this to come up a little. There obviously is going to be a power difference, but right now it's, it fucking feels like this, where the good cards are stupid and the rest of the cards are just not playable. <laughs> it makes me sad. Blight Breath Catablepus. <laughs> it's a six mana beast. <laughs> it's a 3 2, and as a battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus X to the end of turn, where X is your in black. I love this ability. I think the card is way, way too bad. Like, it's it's way too bad. Obviously, it's at least a minus two, minus two. In, in sealed, probably fine. Frankly, probably good. Frankly, probably good in sealed. But I wish I could have an effect like this in standard. Like, give, give me my Chupacabra. Hateful Eidolon is a black for a lifelink 1-2 creature. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you controlled. That was attached to it. This is a white ability. These are fine white stats. White cares about enchantments. And white really fucking cares about controlling auras. Why is this a black card? Can someone please tell me why this is a black card and not a white card? I would really like to know. I really want to know. He gets punishment. Um, spoiler alert: He becomes Atlas. He loses his um, his wreath thing, um, and he has to hold up a big fucking rock in the other world. <laughs> it ends a battlefield with four task counters on it. Um, enchanted creature can't attack or block. It loses all of its abilities, and it has tap to remove a task counter from Helion's punishment. Then, if there are no task counters, destroy Helion's punishment. Notably, you can proliferate the counters back on, and keep making him roll that boulder right back up the hill. I, I understand that. Here he's depicted as Atlas, but it's like referencing the, the whole rolling a boulder back up the top of the hill for it just to roll back down. Whatever, I think it's fine. <sighs> Heal its intervention. The white intervention is, in my opinion, the worst intervention. Instant, which is nice. Choose one. Destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments. In standard, that's probably not going to matter. Like, Disenchant is just a better card. Target player, player gains twice X life. Four mana, you gain four life. That is a bad rate. Five mana, you gain six life. Arguably still not a good rate. Once you get to six mana, 
You gain 8 life? Is that a good rate? I don't think so. I don't think that this card ever, like, has a good rate. I mean, even I mean, if you're paying 10 mana, I guess you get 16 life. But even then, I if I'm paying 10 mana for something, I'd rather my 10 drop, or my 10 mana card just kill my opponent. Um, this card feels bad. I could be wrong. This card feels bad. Great art, though. Cura Best the Sea God. <laughs> this sock is fucking great. I don't, this is going straight into my, uh, into my, uh, my L. Into Moldrotho. Seven mana for a saga. First, first, uh, lore. Make an 8-8. Eight, eight. Blue Kraken with he uh, Hexproof. That is fine. You know, seven mana for an 8-8 eight, eight with Hexproof is the, the generic, like, Sea Serpent uh, stats. I think that's totally fine. Then, tap all non-land permanents target opponent controls. They don't untap during their next untap step. Then, you sleep their ass, and you get to attack with your big-ass Kraken. Then, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls untap it, any of their permanents. This is the same mana cost. The same exact mana cost as Agent of Treachery. Obviously, you don't get the card immediately, but you get an 8-8, and you get to sleep them. I fucking love this card. I love it so much. Um, is it going to replace Agent of Treachery? My guess is no. Um, am I going to play it? My guess is yes. <sighs> it's our favorite person with too many fucking mouths. Um, let's just look here really quick. Mouth all up in his feet. Mouth on his ankle. Mouth, mouth on his calf. Mouth on his knee. Big ass mouth in his stomach. Mouths everywhere. Just fucking everywhere. I don't appreciate it. You can see the teeth in there. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I just don't. Two mana for a 6-6 six, six Elder Giant. When it escapes, or when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escapes. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a card, or uh, discard a non-line card this way, loses three life. Uh, <clears throat> You're forcing discard, which is great. There's there's a way in standard to do stupid things with this, and I can't remember what exactly it was, and I apologize for that. I will be playing it by the time the Theros preview event is a thing. Definitely uh, join me for that. This card is cool. It feels incredibly weak compared to the green one, but whatever. Faithful End. I assume this is one of the other Elder Titans. Or Elder Giants. One of the Titans. But uh, we only get two of them in this set for some fucking reason, even though there are four. I guess it's for next time we go to Theros, when Cloythus is going to have to deal with this again. Clothus. Okay, Clothus, not Cloythus. No, first why. Clothus. Okay. It might actually be... Is it T? Is it like Clothus? Clothus? It's T-H-Y... A two sound or a third sound? I don't know. I don't know fucking pseudo-Greek. Anyway, three mana instant. It deals three damage to any target and scry one. Uh, this is reminiscent of... Not incinerate. Magma spray? Magma jet? Something like that. Um, but I think it deals two damage for two. Um, this deals three damage for three. Scry's one. It's fine. It's not great. It's probably not going to see any standard play. <laughs> Fucking love this card. Look at his blobfish ass face. Ichthyomorphous. Three mana. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature becomes a fish. It becomes a fish. I like the card. It's fun. Soul Guide Lantern. One mana. When it enters the battlefield, exile target cards from a graveyard. That seems fine to me. This seems like a decent sideboard card. Um, if too much nonsense is in graveyard. But wait, there's more. Uh, sacrifice. Obviously, there's more. It's fucking. If it just did that, it would be good. Come on. Sacrifice it. Exile each opponent's graveyard. Not just. Not just one, and it doesn't hit your own. That's not bad. And of course, you can instead pay one to draw a card. If you got rid of, like, the one thing you need to get rid of, and or you just need to draw a card, this can do it for you. Al Seed of Life's Bounty. It's a, a one mana, one one lifelink. Sacrifice it, target creature or enchantment you control. Gains protection from the color of your choice on turn. It's fine, I guess. Anyway, we're just going to talk. There we go. Uh, I need to make it. There we go. I think it should be fine. Um, then I'm just going to talk really quickly about some of these cards. So Flicker of Fate. I really like the fact that we're getting a Flicker effect in Standard. Um, 
that is white. <laughs> I think it's cool. Um, is it going to see play? Possibly. Um, they're kind of like a black-white flicker type deck. Um, and this... Oh, well, I guess it's kind of Esper, too. There are plenty of blue cards, like white-blue cards, so this might actually see some play in a fringe, fringe capacity. Um, Daybreak Chimera is cool. You know, costs less where, X is your uh, where that's your devotion to, to white. Um, so, potentially, this is like... This is actually like a turn three play, or yeah, a turn three play and limited potentially. Oh fuck! Oh fuck, dude! If you get Daxos, you can play this on turn three and limited. That, that's nuts. I need to look up how many. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. There we go. I put. I opened a new tab. I need to see how many, um, double white cards there are. In limited, it. I, I feel like this is consistently going to come down on turn four. And four mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer seems pretty good. I mean, five mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer is not awful. Eh, whatever. Uh, Dreadful Apathy. Uh, thing can't block Exile the Enchanted Creature when you deal like it. It's it's a... Um, <laughs> it's Exile the Creature on Layaway. <laughs> you have a down payment, and then you, you, you pay later... You, you, you can pay later, but you end up paying more in the long run. Uh, Glory Bears. This is this is not... Not good. Fine and limited, I guess, but not good in general. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, uh, it also gains hexproof and indestructible. Uh, I guess if you're trying to play this in a heroic deck... I mean, limited and heroic, this is fine, but otherwise, meh. Once again, heroic card, target creature gets a thing. Um, I can't really talk about that too much. Um, in my opinion, probably great and limited. You know, like, you, you go Chimera into this. Um, you got a good air game into a decent ground game. You know, 3-6 three, uh, three, for 5. That scries on entry seems pretty damn helpful. Um, then they got some oo eyes over here. Or oo I guess. <sighs> one mana, gets plus one, plus one, has vigilance. Escape. Once again, I assume this is helpful for the heroic deck in limited. Whatever. Hey, look, it's a two mana card that is a one, two, or spells are cheaper. Why couldn't this be a two, two? Would it be too strong? P probably, I guess. Ah, it's, it just makes me sad. No legend. Pretty cool dude. Uh, and as a battlefield tapped. Doesn't untap during your untap step if you control the reflection. When it enters, you make a 3-2 reflection. <laughs> you make a a switched version of this thing. And I fuck I fucking love the flavor of this card. It's um it's Narcissus. Do they have Echo in this set? I don't think so. Narcissus and Echo are often told together. Chain to memory. It's a, it's a pretty damn good combat trick. Yeah. Um Deny the Divine, very similar to No Escape. Um, counter target creature enchantment spell. If that spell would be countered, exile instead. Sure, sure. Um, let's see. Um, Metamized Prophecy, I don't really understand, I think. Scry 2, sure. Choose a card name. Okay. So you, you choose a card name either that you have and that you're telling your opponent you have or that you hope you're going to draw and be able to play next turn. And then the next turn, when you cast a spell with a chosen name, for the first time that turn, so you don't even get multiple copies, draw two cards, which is good. And then you look at the top card of each place lab. This card feels less like a saga and more like it's all over the place. I don't know. Um, let's see. We have a, a creepy ass demon. Six mana five five, which is fine. It gets minus minus for each card in your opponent's hand, but at the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card, which includes you, unfortunately. But maybe this is a top end for the mono black discard deck we've all been looking for. I mean, I doubt it, but, you know, maybe. Fruit of Tizarus? It's cool. Um, you know, it, it's very similar to Bump in the Night. Um, they lose one less life, but Bump in the Night is red. Um, Bump in the Night's flashback costs one more, but this costs one less. But you have to exile three other cards, but you can keep doing this. So, I don't know. It might be fine. Funeral Rites. It's like Scry the Bones. Read the bones, sorry. Um, except, instead of scrying, you just have to draw. Um, but you get to fill up your graveyard. 
is this worse than Read the Bones? Yes. Is it different? Yes. Is it going to be C play? I don't know, but I doubt it. Grim Physician. When it dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. The only reason I want to talk about this card is because why can't I choose to hit my own creature? That's it. I just want I just want to be able to hit my own creature. I want the option. I want the option. Whatever. This card's bad. This is like an awful um, uh, Hedron Crab. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's some there's some fucking awesome ass combo. Oh, what's the combo? What's the combo? Something dies and then you get it back because of the enchantment. Fuck. I don't remember what the combo is. I'll be sure to try and play it though. But there's some cool combo with um, uh, Kaya's Ghost Form and Indentured Servitude. Whatever the, the dude with the, the Sedman Cannon art. Um, and this is, does the exact same thing. Um, so there's a lot of redundancy there. So I'm pretty excited for that. Um, let's see what other thing was I thinking of. Um, Farika's Libation is pretty interesting. Um, one, Libation. Fun name. Three mana instant. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Or target opponent sacrifices an enchantment. Um, black getting bad enchant removal I think is, is good. Um, I feel like we've seen something similar with artifacts. Essentially, your opponent gets to choose what artifact and it's always like sacrifice. So I think, I think that's a fine way to make it so black decks aren't totally screwed against uh, enchantment decks. But, you know... It's still not the best. Um, let's see. What were some of the other cards? Because not all of these cards were good. Oh, Underworld Dreams. That was the next card I want to talk about. <laughs> Triple Black goes real great in a fucking mono black deck. Whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. Now, you might not um, say that that's good. You might say that that's not good. Remember... In the mono black deck, you're going to be draining your opponent a lot anyway. An extra couple of damage is not bad. For what it's worth, you could just put this in the sideboard against control decks. <laughs> I, Underworld Dream, Underworld Dreams is fucking cool. Uh, oh, we got another um, sacrifice enchantment card for this is red. Um, three mana instant. You can sacrifice a creature or enchantment. Except it only hits a creature. <laughs> Why? Uh, fling can hit any target. <laughs> I understand that you can only sacrifice a, a creature, and I think Fling is uh, sorcery speed. No. Fling is instant speed, isn't it? Am I dumb? No, Fling is instant! <laughs> uh, I guess... I guess it's just because... No, this, is, this doesn't even scale! Fling is potentially better. I don't know. It's a, it just annoys me, and I want to. I want to let it be known. Uh, da, 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 da. It's this Elysian carry added. Two mana for a one one. Add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power for greater, add two mana of any one color instead. This card is no Sylvan carry added, but it's another option. It appears that Wizards has decided that their their benchmark for big creatures is four. Fine, whatever. Just print more good five drops or, or five power creatures from my Mael deck, please. She really wants the help. Fucking Moss Viper, I love it. <laughs> One, it's a cute ass neck. It's adorable. Fuck you if you say anything else. And two, these cards are always great and limited. <laughs> Fucking the rats, um, one mana, one one rats with death touch, are always. I've never had a sealed, uh, uh, sealed environment where these weren't good. I fucking love this card. Um, Nesting Horn Beetle, I really like. Once again, it has that that power for greater sub mechanic. Uh, two mana, two two at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control another creature, get put a plus one plus one counter on the beetle. That makes sense. You don't want it so that once the beetle gets big enough, it just keeps giving itself uh, more counters. It needs the friend. Um, but I absolutely love this card. Uh, Thrill of Possibilities being reprinted. Underworld Fires is interesting, kind of. Um, it is a cheap board wipe. It gets to hit Planeswalkers, but it only does one damage. What's nice is that it does exile things. 
The issue is it does one damage, so I doubt it's gonna be bleed. The, the, the Omen of the Hunt. Omen of the Hunt is good. Like, let's be honest. It it is three mana, which is kind of bad, but the fact that you get to sacrifice it later on in Scry, and it just puts the card to hands or into play, I think it's I think it's probably pretty good. Gosh, excuse me. Um, then of course we have the good old fashioned uh, obligatory vehicle in the set. Four mana, three three for a chariot. First strike, triple haste, crew one. I like it. I don't think it's broken. I think it's totally fine for what it is. Then of course we have wings of hubris. I was talking a little bit earlier about um, Diadalus, um, and this is this is uh, some Diadalus shit. It it is Diadalus. I didn't actually look it up. Fuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Dallas. He he and his son like made the made the things to escape the maze place, right? Oh man, I'm I'm an awful historian. Two minutes for two two, common. When a landed card ends a uh, graveyard from anywhere, you gain a life. Put the top card in the library. Right Fuck you. Um, Voracious Typhon. Typhon. So this is this is kind of interesting. Um, Typhon, if I recall correctly, was a um, a monster that was birthed by fuck i think it was gaia fuck was it was it gaia in uranus i'm pretty sure uranus was the main one who ate all of his babies Ugh, fuck i can't remember typhon was this fucking horrifying um monstrosity um that was like this big bad this one is less of a big bad because it's just a generic form in a 4-4. That said, you know, it's it's fine and limited, I guess. Um, I do like that it is an actual monster, you know. It's a little Hydra-y, but, like, the fact that it has this big mouth plus, like, a bunch of snakes on its head. Um, I, I appreciate that they had a Typhon card. Um, Hero of Nixworn. I think it's the last one that I haven't talked about. As a battlefield, make a make a one one white human. It's a three mana for a three three essentially. This card's fine. Whenever you cast a spell that targets this creature you control, get extra. It is a heroic card, but it's also just not awful. Oh, I just noticed it does make two soldiers, because it, it itself is a soldier and it makes a soldier. Seems decent. Anyway, um, I'll, that was me talking too fucking long about these damn cards. So I'd like to thank my lovely patrons. Um, hope you all a happy brewing for the new set. If you would like to see me. Um, play early. I'll be streaming on here, YouTube, um, on Wednesday. Wednesday the 15th, I think it is? Wednesday the 15th. I'll be streaming the, uh, the preview event. So if you have any decks, go ahead and check the community page and link me uh, a deck list or just tell me the type of deck you want to see me make and I shall make it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, go ahead and tap that like button, add that subscribe, go ahead and Ring that bell for some fucking reason. Anyway, until next time, I'll be one.